Oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot make this kind of stuff up. I do believe 50 Cent actually said that in, in a different kind of, well, shall we say 50 Cent way earlier today on Twitter. We're going to get to what he's saying in response to allegations that the mother of his child was somehow involved in all of this, allegations that she was on the payroll for um, <clears throat> some certain favors from P. Diddy, Sean Combs. I mean, this is, it's actually turning into a business story because there is a lawsuit that was filed by a Mr. Rodney Jones that names Sean Combs as well as a whole series of other people, including ABC Corporation, including Love Records, Chalice Recording Studios, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, and the head of Universal Music Group, Lucian Charles Grange. So some really seedy, horrific allegations. The feds, as you know, all over this one, we're going to talk about sort of why now, what the motivation may be. We do know that in his past, Diddy has been quite prevalent in terms of speaking out for and on behalf of the Democrat Party. We'll show you some of that video that's emerging right now and making the rounds. All of this coming as uh, the feds descended on two of his properties there, um, including one in Miami, his drug dealer, alleged dealer has been arrested in Miami. Just stuff that you don't really want to talk about. But we will. We will. Plus, big contrast in two political parties today as the left gets prepared to have its biggest, and I mean biggest, fundraiser in history. This one's for the history books. $25 million they're anticipating to raise for themselves in New York City and for Joe Biden Donald Trump is there in New York, but not to raise money. Instead, he's there to attend the wake of the fallen officer, Officer Diller, who was shot horrifically at just a traffic stop recently. So we'll talk about that juxtaposition, if you would. And new details on Candace Owens. Ben Shapiro's breaking his silence, finally speaking out on a friend of mine's show. We're going to get to all of that. And... The guy who took some, what, $7.8 billion, head of FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried, he's going away. We're going to talk about what his sentence is. It was supposed to be life, but now they've amended it. Welcome to the program. It is so good to have you back. We are live. I'm looking at all your comments in real time, welcoming all my familiar folks. Comrade, thank you so much. Uh, you, <laughs> the... <laughs> I see your comment there because, again, we're in live. We're live. Uh, I'll get to all of them at the end, but thank you for your generosity. As always, uh, to all of you for your support, do what you can to share, to like, to subscribe, to hit the bell, all of those good things. I'm here live every single day, and I need your help to keep growing this. We've been growing incredibly, some 249,000 subscribers, trying to make it by 250 by Easter. You can also join the team. We have some off-record conversations behind the scenes for the team members. The next one is happening tomorrow. That is Friday, so consider that. And also, if you're interested in investing, and I hope, I really hope you are, because it is so important that you protect yourself and your future, and you have something someday to live off of, I really want you to go over to 76 Research. Consider signing up for the 76 Report. New one comes out tomorrow, or even better yet, one of our model portfolios I've teamed up with my friend, longtime friend, Rob Horton, who worked 25 years on Wall Street, managed billions of dollars. And I said, you know, we got to do something that gets these institutions out of the way so that we can give people good quality, honest research that's not convoluted by all the various sort of interests, shall we say, that they have on Wall Street. So I started 76 Research with him. We've got three model portfolios for you that you can sign up for, with 10 to 15 stock picks. And we also, ladies and gentlemen, have what's known as the 76 Report, where you get some of the picks here and there, and you get our analysis, macro analysis of what is going on in the economy and in the markets and some political stuff, because who can resist that as well? All right, big show today. Big show. We begin on Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, who's facing a lot right now. As you know, the feds closed in on him. They, they're getting him for allegedly trafficking. Oh, what does that mean? It means allegedly trafficking of minors. 
You see, there's something called the Man Act. We learned about that in the Epstein case. I'm telling you the similarities here. And, and I've read the, yeah, I was reading the, the entire suit that was just filed by Rodney Jones against Sean Combs and a whole host of other people. Uh, the feds are now in on this. Anyway, when I was reading this, I couldn't help but be struck by the similarities between Jeffrey Epstein and what we know went on there and the allegations that are being made here. So the Mann Act is something that protects minors from sexual exploitation being driven across state lines. I mean, you even have Homeland Security involved in this. I mean, good, good to know they're doing something, right? I mean, this is, this is really wild. So it, we saw the video. D Drew, if we have it, we can play that again, the video of them descending upon the house. You see the sons being held up by authorities. It's really, really wild. And then there's a, this out today. Daphne Joy, she is the mother of 50 Cent's child, the baby mama, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Daphne Joy, who apparently also works over on OnlyFans, um, she is being named in this lawsuit that I was just telling you about as an alleged <clears throat> worker. You can see it there on your screen. If you're listening to the Apple podcast, thank you for that. I'll let you infer what is being said. If you're not listening to the Apple podcast, make sure when you get a chance, go and, and download the show on Apple podcasts. It helps me a lot by the way, when you do. So try giving that a consideration. Anyway, Sean Diddy Combs had her apparently allegedly on the payroll. Well, her ex-boyfriend, who, by the way, cannot stand Diddy, like can't stand him. I'll show you some of the tweets. He tweeted about this and he's like, wow, oh, wow. I didn't know you were a <clears throat> worker, you <clears throat> worker, LOL. Do we have that tweet? Because this is something else. Sean Diddy kind of taking a jab at his ex there, who's the mother of his child, and saying these things about her, I didn't know you were a mm, worker, you little uh, LOL, yo, this <clears throat> SHIT is a movie. He's been trolling him for a while. Take a look at this tweet. It says, now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless, unless, you know, you did something really bad. So um, this is kind of a, a big deal. Not unless they, they got a case, he writes. So 50 Cent, who interestingly has been very pro Donald Trump in some of his Instagram remarks and some of his tweets and kind of encouraged his community to take a look around. He's actually getting in on this action in a pretty big way. So he, you know, can't stand Diddy. And now it comes out that apparently his ex-girlfriend, who's the mother of his child, is somehow implicated in all of this it's really ugly stuff. And I would just say this, you know what? The world is closing in on Diddy. We got news just this week that his <clears throat> dealer, is this funny to see me talking about this? <laughs> this is the opera girl, okay? I never liked rap, still don't like rap. Was telling Drew, the producer, I don't even think I know these songs. He's like, yeah, you do. You've heard them, you've heard them. Maybe I've heard them, but you know, the kind goes in one ear out the other. I certainly don't understand what they're saying, nor do I want to understand half the time what they're saying because these lyrics would just make your blood boil. Anyway, the world's closing in. We got word that uh, Brandon Paul was arrested on uh, allegations of having cocaine and, and marijuana. And while, you know, this is a uh, Homeland Security that got him while being on the rap mogul's private jet in Miami. So this seems to be ensnaring a lot of people, one of which might be him, 25 years old. He's now being implicated in all of this. It's really ugly. It's really, really ugly. I want to play for you a clip from MSNBC that I actually showed you guys yesterday, but you need to see it. Or if you're just joining us for the first time, I want you to see it. And, and if you... You already saw it, you should see it again, because this actually kind of helps to crystallize, I think, what we might be looking at. And as I go through some of these allegations in the lawsuit, I want you to keep this in the back of your head. What he's saying here about the lifestyle that Diddy was living and what it meant for young people, including a family member of his. This is Torrey. 
he used to actually be a contributor on my one of my former colleagues, Dylan Radigan's show over on MSNBC. Dylan used to be at CNBC with me. I want you to take a look at this. I want you to watch, and I want you to think about this as we then dive into some of these other allegations. Here we go. Here's Torrey. It seems part of, uh, part of his whole life, his whole journey has been this sort of scorched earth campaign where you see him continuing to succeed or do big things and leave people in his wake hurt. We go back to CCNY, which he, a, a party that he overpromoted, that people yes. ended up getting killed. You think about the many artists who either left, you know, in complaint or went to the church or, you know, died nice. after, you Good. know, I mean, there was a lot of dis, a lot of disheartened artists who left him yeah. that he raised up. Shine. At, uh, on and on. Um, and now this, this large, growing number of people who are alleging crazy stuff yes. about him. Yeah. And these are things that people in the industry have been hearing about. It's over giving time. R. Kelly to Ray. It's giving, it's, 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 it's disturbing. You know, I, I was personally disturbed many years ago. Okay. I, I, I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I and he said, yes. And they were flying around one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member like well, what happened and they wouldn't say yeah and i'm like what what do you why did it end he wouldn't yeah. say and years later they finally came out and this is a male yeah and said that uh puff had said come home stay the night with me or the internship is over and they said absolutely not he said absolutely not uh -huh. and the internship ended uh but from there i was like Oh, like oh, this is this is God. how it goes. OK. Yeah. OK. So to hear that things went even further with potentially, allegedly many other people. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not I don't it, you know, we, we feel like we've seen this coming. Uh, so if this was known about for so long, like why did nobody say anything? Why did nobody do anything until now? Think about Justin Bieber when he was 15 years old, 15 years old, Justin Bieber apparently went and like spent 48 hours with Diddy and they did this little video montage about it. And, and people now, including you guys in the chat, I've seen you, you've referenced this and I want to play this for some people who aren't aware that Justin Bieber, who incidentally has become very religious. You heard Torre just say some artists became very religious. He spent 48 hours with him. And, you know, look, I, I'm not, I, I want to be careful because these are all allegations and you're always innocent until proven guilty. But there are a lot of people saying a lot of things right now. And so it's conjuring up memories of this clip from when Justin Bieber was just a 15 year old kid. And now hearing what we're hearing, reading this lawsuit, this kind of makes you sick to your stomach, okay, folks? Let's watch this. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. So it just calls up a lot of, um, Scary thoughts. I mean, he looked like such a sweet, innocent kid, you know, 15 years old. He looks so young, too, Justin Bieber, in that clip. Well, Usher is now, or did, weigh in on the situation, I should say. It would be very interesting to hear from these guys now. I mean, I wonder if Justin Bieber will come out and say anything. I wonder if Usher will come out and say anything. But he did go on uh, a, a noted 
program on Sirius with Howard Stern. I know you don't like Howard Stern, but let's listen to Usher in this particular moment, because when you think about what Usher's saying, and then actually I think Usher wound up signing Bieber, and maybe he was trying to protect him from something. I don't know. Again, this is just all allegations at this point, but really, really scary, startling stuff when you think about what might really be happening in that industry. Let's watch Usher here tell Howard Stern what was going on when he was a little kid and living, living with Diddy. Watch. Moved to New York City, and I lived Ooh. with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. <laughs> What I did say is that there were very curious things taking place, uh -huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh -huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans, Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and, what, I, and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell <laughs> no. See? Yeah, hell no. You, you bet. And it, it makes you wonder, was he trying to protect Bieber at all? Let me go to this 50 Cent breaking right now, just sending out another Instagram note here, weighing in on all that's been happening. 50 Cent saying, quote, Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every room of his, forgive me, this is his, this is his post from the Rodney lawsuit. So this is Rodney Jones' civil complaint document, which I have and, and am reading. And part of this alleges that there were cameras everywhere. So when I said it, it was Epstein-like, I wasn't kidding, right? Cameras alleged to be everywhere. According to the complaint, Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every room of his home, has recordings of several celebrities, artists, music label executives, and athletes engaging in illegal activity. These individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent. Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person who has attended his freak off parties and his house parties that may give you some indication of why the feds suddenly bust in, right? Anyway, 50 Cent posting this right now. And again, I, I just have to look at the timing of it. I mean, think about it. this suit was filed on February 26, 2020. They're going to have this guy go down. He's going to go down because they want to make sure that uh, other people are saved. I, I'm just, I mean, this is really wild. So again, there's a lot of allegations against a lot of key people here about some really, really seedy stuff. I mean, stuff that I am not comfortable reading you out loud, but I can tell you that it does say that there's a trigger warning that this document contains highly graphic information about what went down. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that because um, we want to try and keep things as clean as we can here, as bad as this is, you know that uh, this is not good. So here is the Instagram thing. I, I think we can get this, Drew, if we have it. The Instagram message, again, I just want to read to you what Diddy is saying in response here. It's already been liked by nearly 300,000 people. He said, this is going to be so good. What you want to bet, I'm a get these tapes. I'll pay top dollar for them. <laughs> you been over there? 
I don't go to Puffy's parties. <laughs> so he's just having a field day. Like he's trolling and trolling and trolling and trolling. Puffy is somebody he clearly doesn't like, nor clearly does he respect. And apparently Diddy is, is well known for these problems in the industry. I'm just shocked that JLo ever had anything to do with him. They say that she kind of got wise to it all pretty quick. But this lawsuit is outrageous all kinds of illicit substances and illicit activities between allegedly Diddy and some underage females and, um, well, apparently uh, both ways. So he's living up to his music here. Um, there's some violence detailed, which suggests some of those things that we heard from Torre. And that's pretty darn alarming. So I would say this, if they've got video of some important people doing some things that they shouldn't, if he has video of that, you can imagine that the feds really did want to get their hands on that. It's interesting to me that Lucien Grange is being named here as a defendant in the lawsuit. And they're accusing, or this Rodney Jones is accusing the record executive, the CEO of Universal Records, as somehow being knowledgeable of all of this and thus contributing to it. So a really ugly story, one that we don't like to talk about, but we need to talk about because I'll tell you, you know, there's some powerful people out there and they're doing some stuff they absolutely should not be doing. And we don't, you know, I sometimes I, I, I you know, we live in probably, you know, I do, maybe you do live in, in a, not a naive world, but a world where hopefully this kind of stuff is not going on. And the point is it, it is happening. These allegations are startling, but you have only to look at the Epstein case, which was proven out to know how scary the big wide world really is out there. And you've got to ask yourself, why do these people get away with it and get away with it and get away with it? Even though there's all these rumors circulating and maybe it's because they're really powerful or maybe there's tape on certain people. I do want to point out that Diddy might have had some interesting kinds of protectors. Maybe there were people that just didn't really want to hear about this because now there's a new tape circulating. My former employer, Fox News, actually ran this just last night of Sean Combs really talking up a lot of Democrat candidates. I'll tell you, this is not a good look for the Democrat Party at this moment in time. Let's take a peek of Diddy with uh, Obama and Hillary and everyone else. One of the few politicians that young people relate to. And we want to just hear a message on why you feel it's important for them to vote this year. I really think that this year, more than any other, uh, young people have their entire futures at stake. And I believe your slogan, vote or die, is accurate. When you want to be the president of the United States, you, you call your man. Call MTV. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I just want to say how much I appreciate Puff Dan. For, for doing the kinds of work that he's doing because he doesn't have to do this. And I want to apologize for not sweating, but I, but I do this so much. I, I'm so cool. I just want y'all to see everybody I'm interviewing is sweating. I'm not even touching my brow. I'm so cool. And I want to apologize. I ain't trying to make you look bad or nothing like that, but I'm just so cool. Um, we we, 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 we. a t-shirt. <laughs> I tell you, if he was wearing one of those fancy designer clothes he's designing, he'd be sweating just like me. My name is Sarah Obama. No, my name is not Barack Obama. My name is Sarah Obama. It's very important that you do not believe the polls. The polls are trying to say that my brother from another mother, Barack Obama, is up leading in the polls by 10 points. Don't believe that, brother. See, this is where we mess up. We start believing in the hype and we get too comfortable. Be ready to stand in the... Wow. Okay. So he's back in the Dems. He's according to these allegations, living a really treacherous, horrific lifestyle. And according to Torre over on MSNBC, everybody kind of knew about it and nobody did anything. And eventually people that got out wound up turning to the church. Thank goodness. Or just really becoming a train wreck. And that's if they got out. That's if they made it. So this is, uh, this is alarming. And, and this is the guy who's the spokesperson for the Democrats over and over again through the years. This is who 
Obama was turning to to help push his campaign or Hillary Clinton was turning to to help push her campaign. I'm sorry, this helps crystallize, ladies and gentlemen, what's really going on in the, in the Democrat Party right now, this case of have and have nots. They align themselves with the likes of Diddy while simultaneously being out there, frankly, money grubbing to the wealthiest New Yorkers saying, hey, you know, hitting them up so that they can have a historic, and it is historic, fundraiser. They are raising, the Democrats are raising for Barack Obama's, for Barack Obama, you see, that was a slip. That was, that was a slip. <laughs> You know, we always joke that maybe it is Obama running things behind the scenes, or maybe it's um, maybe it's Michelle Obama who eventually will be uh, running things with Barack Obama still behind the scenes. Anyway, they're raising money for Joe Biden's campaign. They're doing it in New York City, and it's huge. Like it is a big deal. It's a fortune to go to this thing. It's five hundred thousand dollars. You get your picture with all three ex presidents. That would be Obama, Clinton, and. Biden and Annie Leibovitz, who's like a famous Vogue photographer is going to take the picture, blah, 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 blah. I have so many friends that work in New York city and they're like not going into the city today. Cause they're like, there's no point. This is definitely an at home work day, a zoom day because it's gridlock everywhere. Well, you know who else is in the New York area? Not going to a $25 million fundraiser. Today, that would be none other than the former president, the 45th president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, arriving on this wet, cold, rainy day to go to a, f a wake outside of the fancy schmancy shindig for the 25 million bucks for Democrats. He's going to the wake of the slain officer Officer Diller, John Diller, who died on the job because he got shot by some reckless hoodlum who he was stopping at a traffic light. Routine day, he's a family man. He's just out doing his job, stops someone at a traffic light, and his life is over. Well, Donald Trump went to this wake today. Do we have some video of him? We might even have, yeah, there we go. Here he is arriving for the wake of the officer that was killed. I actually think that that image right there and take a look, let it sink in, speaks volumes. There he is greeting the people. I should point out that the cops the police officers union, they said they didn't want any local politicians there. I mean, I don't think they feel supported at all in their jobs because so much has happened that has driven a wedge between the cops and everybody else. There's been a lack of respect. How do they do their jobs when they can't do their jobs? When you have the White House coming out and saying stuff like this, instead of saying we honor his memory, Corinne Jean-Pierre, who we know is not the greatest press secretary around, but she just can't help herself. She goes straight to, to gun violence. I mean, wow. I mean, you want to politicize this in a moment like this? Let's watch her. Relates to um, uh, the death of the officer. Look, our hearts go out uh, to this officer who tragically lost his life in the line of duty. We're also praying for his family during this difficult time, uh, who now has an empty seat at their dinner table. President Biden is deeply grateful for the sacrifices police officers make to keep our community safe. Uh, this shooting is yet another painful reminder of the toll of gun violence, that what it's, what it's doing to inflict uh, on families and our communities and our nation. Uh, and that's why the president signed more than two dozen executive actions. That's why we're able to pass a bipartisan agreement to uh, deal with the gun violence that we're seeing in this country. Obviously, more work needs to be done. We need Congress to continue to act uh, on making sure that our communities are safe uh, and um, again our hearts go out uh, to the to this officer and um, and his family it's a difficult time for them
these two things are kind of unrelated right now. I'm telling you this. Like, she, she's got to spin, 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 spin. Let me just say, time and place, lady, time and place. All right, I don't even want to get into this argument, which, by the way, is not an argument, but time and place. Beyond inappropriate of Karine Jean-Pierre to take it to that level on a day like today. Beyond inappropriate of the Democrats to pat themselves on the back on a day like today. We got our 25 million bucks. Woohoo, woohoo. 25 million, historic level, because we want to make sure that Biden wins no matter what. And then there's Donald Trump not getting paid to go show up at a fallen officer's wake on a rainy, cold day in New York. What does that tell you? What message does that send? It sends a message that one person, the 45th president of the United States, actually cares. Cares about individuals, cares about the police. By the way, cares about law and order. And the other team cares about money. Money, money, money. Well, I got news for him. Money's not everything. And you know what? Hillary Clinton had more money, a whole lot more money than Donald Trump. And I don't see her in the Oval Office. You know who else had more money? Biden had a lot more money than Donald Trump in 2020 as well. And that was neck and neck. We can have another discussion at another time about that one. I will say I'm glad Lara Trump has taken the whole ballot harvesting issue seriously because we need to fight fire with fire. And so long as they're going to play by that set of rules, so can we. But don't forget what's going on in real time. They're out there money grubbing. Do we have the video of all three of them getting off the plane? The little short steps? You know, because there we go. Okay. You got Joe Biden. You got Barack Obama. Well, Clinton didn't make that round. Okay, so he's, he's got his own plane, I guess. But there's Barack Obama. Apparently, he's been really stressed out about these poll numbers because, well, they show Donald Trump continuing to just surge in the polls compared to, especially when you factor in RFK, compared to Joe Biden. Let's turn this sound up for just a moment. Oh, okay, we lost it. Hey, Drew, do we have the sound of Lee Zeldin? Because I think Lee helps put it in sort of, um, it helps crystallize this picture. This is former congressman from New York, Lee Zeldin, who, by the way, is being rumored on the VP thing. We're going to get to that in a little bit. But Lee Zeldin really helping to articulate just exactly who Jonathan Diller was and what a day like today really means. While his one-year-old son uh, will have to grow up uh, without a dad, may not be watching... uh, our conversation here for many years and be able to appreciate it. Uh, when that time comes for, for that family to look back at this moment, know how grateful we, I am as a New Yorker, as an American, that we have heroes like office, the officer Diller who was standing watch, who was uh, willing to give up his life in defense of uh, safety and security of us as New Yorkers. There are a lot of NYPD officers retiring, a lot of people quitting. Uh, a lot of folks aren't signing up and they're, they're heading elsewhere. Uh, but this officer gave up his life into uh, his family. Uh, our, our, our appreciation, our gratitude is, uh, is unyielding and, and, and never ending. Um, we, we have a situation with, with uh, severe out of control crime in this city. Uh, on, they have elected officials like Jomani Williams and others who are advocating policies that are throwing our law enforcement under the bus, defunding up in Albany, pro-criminal laws that are uh, prioritizing criminals over law-abiding New Yorkers. Everyone hears about the cashless bail law, but that's not it. Prosecutors like Alvin Bragg who refuse to prosecute. Uh, and in New York City, an attack on qualified immunity and, and uh, people elected. You know, look, Lee gets it. He's the making the point that we have our issues right in New York and you don't have a willingness to really clamp down on the crime that you would have had even under. Look, it doesn't have to be all conservatives. Giuliani, the police loved Giuliani. But you know who else they loved? Mike Bloomberg, because Mike Bloomberg actually took this stuff seriously. It's just a recent phenomenon that sprung out of Black Lives Matter, 
back in the summer of 2020, where suddenly you had to defund the police, police were persona non grata. I mean, they are leaving the police force everywhere they can, left and right, because who the heck needs it? Who needs it? When you're going to be treated like that and your, your ability to do your job is so impeded by the political environment in which you live, a quick reminder, please subscribe to this show if you have not yet. I see so many. I see some team members here. Read Omega 24, Mike Costa, good to welcome you back to this program. If you haven't signed up as a team member, you can do that right here on YouTube. We are going to be live tomorrow with just the team. So just a little group here. You're welcome to do that. Um, I do love having you guys here. And if nothing else, subscribe to the show, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you hit the thumbs up, you share, and all that good stuff. Or Don Baca is going to get after you. You watch he'll have a thing or two to say by the way where are we are we at a thousand likes for this episode yet or do we have a ways to go we might still have a ways to go i can't actually tell but i can see a lot of you are watching so that is absolutely thousands of people now watching it's wonderful i think we're going to make two hundred and fifty thousand subs by easter maybe even by good friday tomorrow um i want to give a quick plug for some friends of mine that really care about this policy right now. I mean, whether it's the fact that blue lives do matter or the fact that inflation is out of control, our friends over at JCN, they know how serious all of this is for our lives and for small business owners' lives. So you should check them out. They do a lot to help individual business owners all around the country to really put forward the ideas and the thought that's going to really make or break small communities. And, and they do all this training and they, they do it for free. And it's really great to see. So if you're somebody who's interested, by the way, in speaking out on behalf of your community, think of this almost like the Chamber of Commerce, but like the conservative version of the Chamber of Commerce that wants to protect you and your business for the future. Go over and check them out. Alfredo Ortiz runs it. He's wonderful. He comes on the show regularly. Join jcn.com job creators network. Just a great, great group. Look, I mean, we got a lot of policy issues that are totally, totally messed up, really messed up. And you got to ask yourself why that is. I mean, why are they out there protecting those that I guess they think they that need protection? It brings us back to what's going on with Sean Combs. If this was known, like, why did it go on and on and on and on? I'm being told that victims are coming forward, alleged victims, and they are speaking very freely right now with the feds. But I do also wonder, like, why now? Like, why are the feds so concerned right now? Is it because of this lawsuit? Is it because somebody finally came forward and said, hey, you know what? There are all these video cameras and there were all these wild parties. There are some pictures here of the plaintiff, Rodney Jones, on Thanksgiving Day, right before Mr. Combs invites Mr. Jones into the restroom and attempted to force him to ingest some illegal substances. So there's a lot, you know, this is, this is all in here. Um, this is all public information, and it's, it's just sad to see. Um, and the, the, the talk of the assault that was going on, and the Man Act, as I mentioned, because people are traveling from California to New York to Florida, also the U.S. Virgin Islands is mentioned, which is why you might have seen Homeland Security involved. This is a mess. And trafficking with underage uh, people, it is also alleged. So why is it that certain people are protected for as long as they've been protected? I mean, he's been kind of a big deal music artist for a really long time. We need a set of of rules, some fairness, if you would, in, in our world, because this is just not okay. Um, speaking of fairness, speaking of rules, a, a guy who actually was a very big donor to the Democrat Party and initially looked like he might actually get off, I'm talking about Sam Bankman-Fried of F fame. It has just come out, ladies and gentlemen, this guy who had this crypto, what's the way to describe it? A crypto exchange, right? where he just kind of apparently lost like billions of dollars and people were left high and dry. He has just been sentenced to 25 years. And this is a big, big deal because 
25 years, you compare and contrast it, say, with Jeffrey Skilling, who had all kinds of shenanigans going on as the president of Enron. He got 14 years. He actually initially got 24. Elizabeth Holmes, who also was defrauding investors, she got 11 years and three months. Martha Stewart, you know Martha Stewart. She's made a heck of a comeback. I mean, hey, she's she's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. <clears throat> not, not necessarily anything you want to see, but hey, she looks good for her age, I guess. But again... <laughs> that gets me on to ESG and the nonsense. I'll bring that up to you in a moment. But Martha Stewart got five months. Bernie Madoff, 150 years, went down in his history as the biggest Ponzi scheme ever heard of. Well, Sam Bankman Fried, there's an interesting book written on him by Michael Lewis. And Michael Lewis took a lot of criticism because they're like, oh, you know, you're too positive on him. But I, I read the book, and basically, I think one of the fundamental problems for someone like Sam Bankman Fried, and I wouldn't be surprised if Sean Combs has some of the same issues, is that he was kind of like void of any real feeling. And he just kind of saw life as a mathematical equation. And you have, you know, some good over here and some bad over here, and it all evens out. And he approached his business in this sort of constant mathematical equation way. What's fascinating is actually they did recover the majority of funds. And you know, they went missing, and then they were recovered. They've recovered, I want to say, 90 cents on the dollar. So that's pretty massive, pretty significant. Um, and you're talking about some 7.3 or $7.8 billion. So worth noting, my, my dear friend Rob, who I started 76 Research with, Go there as well. If you're interested in investing, you need the primer. Even if you're not interested in investing, you should go there and get all the free stuff you can from 76research.com. I was talking recently with Rob about this, who had invested in um, sort of a, a vehicle that enables you to collect on the assets that they were getting from the the currency that, that had gone missing. It was sort of another way to play this. And he was very successful with it. Anyway, it, it's fascinating because they were able to recover quite a bit of this. Um, so if you haven't yet gone to 76research.com, I encourage you to do that. My baby there, I'm the co-founder of this firm, and I felt so passionately for so long that investors deserve a better shot at having some equity and fairness in their portfolios. I mean, you think about these big companies, right? Like BlackRock that control so much, what is it, $10 trillion in assets that they have under management. And I know Larry Fink, I've interviewed him many, many times over the years. He kind of got this ESG stuff from Europe and said, okay, well, we're going to implement this here and won't this be great? You know, we'll just invest in ESG, DEI friendly companies, and that will be better for everyone. Except that it's not, because when you're so focused on this ESG nonsense, you totally lose sight of the fact that companies have to turn profits. Okay, and profits are what make the world go around. Now they're all about money, but let's be honest. I mean, Disney, what are you thinking? Disney, you've lost a billion plus dollars there. That one's for you, Don. Don hates Disney. <laughs> he, he actually messaged in one of the chats or in one of the notes just yesterday. Do you know that Disney lost $1.3 billion on their films? Yeah. And you know what? Bob Iger may have hit his you know wall, so to speak. There's a big shareholder meeting coming up. I believe it's April 3rd. And Nelson Peltz, who's like, this company's gone way too woke. It's not making what it should. It's not being valued the way it should because they've got this wokeness in the way of everything else. Nelson Peltz may win that. So if he gets a board seat, whoo, all bets are off. You know, we might actually be able to go to Disney films. Imagine that. <laughs> you know, they, they, they really haven't had much as of late now, have they? You could blame... March 2020, and the closure of all the studios. But I actually blame, not just that, I blame the woke ideology that has infected the entire staff at many of these companies. It's like Bud Light all over again. Remember what happened with Bud Light? You had Alyssa Heinerschneid saying, oh, you know, we don't want those fratty guys anymore. It's like too many Alyssas running the place at Disney that say, we don't we don't want those families from the Midwest anymore. Well, without those families from the Midwest, guess what, Disney, you got not a zilch, zero. So this is why you have to think about these things when you're investing. Guess what? Ben Shapiro of Daily Wire fame, a guy who knows a thing or two about how silly it is to be just constantly woke, so much so that he's given Disney a run for his, its money with a new Snow White. 
I wonder if that's why Disney pulled it. You know, they were going to have a live Snow White edition complete with Rachel Zegler from West Side Story, who kind of hates Snow White and the whole story of Snow White. And she's told us that over and over again. I think Gal Gadot was going to be the uh, evil stepmother, the queen. Well, they spent like a reported $350 million on this thing, and then they pulled it. But guess what? Ben has his own Snow White, the like non-woke Snow White that he's working on with Brett Cooper, who is amazing. Just this really fun young woman who used to be a Disney actress. You know, I should ask her about what life was like, given the Nickelodeon thing that just came out, given the Diddy stuff we're watching. Anyway, Candace Owens was recently fired from Daily Wire. I like Candace a lot. I don't agree with her on everything. And I I don't agree with her support of Gaza and Palestine. And I imagine Ben Shapiro doesn't either. And this may have become a sticking point. We've talked about this before. Well, Ben Shapiro is weighing in on this for the very first time. He just broke his silence. He appeared on my friend Dave Rubin's show. Dave's been on this show. Dave is a, a big, prominent YouTuber, and as is Ben. And they sat down and they talked about literally the elephant in the room. I think that Dave brought it up that way. Let's, let's take a listen. All right, so let's do the elephant in the room for just a moment because I saw you this week on Piers Morgan. He asked you repeatedly about Candace. Uh, you repeatedly basically said, I won't talk about don't that. Don't want yeah, to talk I'll about say that it. here too. I, I, yeah, <laughs> and that's fine. And, and you know, it's interesting because we all sort of came up together to different extents and we've all done a million things together and public events and networks and all of those things. It seems to me that at this moment, she's now a free agent. She happened to end up on Locals, where, which I created, and we they were a platform, not a publisher that you guys are. Can you at least talk to just sort of just sort of where it's at now? She's not with you. She's free. She's and, free to do and, whatever she wants to do, to be wherever she wants to be. And the difference between a publisher like The Daily Wire and a platform like Locals is obviously that a platform should have a very broad range of speech that it allows, including speech that maybe even the creators don't believe is inside what they would consider to be the Overton window. That's a very different thing than direct subsidization of particular opinions. So the Daily Wire would not have a host would not pay a host who was staunchly Mm pro-abortion. They'd have no obligation to pay a host who is staunchly pro-abortion. And so when it comes to the hosts on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, And, you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. Uh, and the, but you know, to the extent that, that the Daily Wire is in fact not a publisher, it is a pla- that, that is in fact not a platform, it is a publisher, that means that there is no moral obligation for the Daily, and there's no free speech problem with the Daily Wire saying we don't wish to pay a particular host or that host saying I don't wish to work here anymore because again, there's a parting of the ways that I'm, that, you know, is not really open for discussion at this point. Do, uh, does it surprise you that so many people, even on our side of this, are confused about that as it relates to free speech and quote unquote cancel culture? Like severing a business tie, as long as you're not throwing someone in jail and they're able to be everywhere else, is not. Uh, I'm not super surprised at the controversy, yeah. honestly, because to, to a certain extent, I think that there's been a, a reaction on the right to the excesses of the left. So, because what the left did is they said that the Overton window ought to be closed so tight that no one can get inside the Overton window. Basically, if you're to the right of Hillary Clinton, you can't be allowed inside Welcome the Overton window. World, yes, exactly. <laughs> and and not just with regard to platforms, but with regard to publishers. So, for example, this week, NBC News deciding that Rana McDaniel was too much for them. Rana right. McDaniel can't work at NBC News. The sacred halls of NBC News must not be sullied by the former head of the RNC. Jen Psaki, however, can have a show on MSNBC, despite being the press secretary for the White House five seconds ago. Right? The, the, the right to response to that is, I think, correct to say you guys have shut the Overton window too tight. But I think some elements of the right have basically said there is no Overton window. The Overton window should be completely exploded with regard not just to platforms, with which I kind of agree, but with regard to publishers. So NBC News not only has an obligation to hire Rana McDaniel, NBC News has the obligation to hire Alex Jones, for example. Right. I, which I don't which think just makes true. no sense at a business level beyond beyond free speech. I mean, there's a reason that networks exist. It, it, Right, they have, editor- they have editorial yeah. positions. Yeah. Daily Wire has a very strong editorial position on a wide variety of, of issues. And by the way, I should say that, you know, there are a lot of people who are suggesting this is about disagreements over Israel. I mean, I can safely say it is not about disagreements over Israel to the extent that, without reference to Candace at all here, Matt Walsh has taken the position that America ought not be involved in the Middle East at all. Matt Walsh's position, so far as I understand it, and I've talked to him about it, is that 
Israel, in a conflict between Israel and Hamas, Israel is obviously a more moral party than the genocidal terrorist group Hamas, but also it's very far away. He doesn't care and it doesn't involve America. That's just a pure isolationist position. I disagree with it. I think it's wrong. I think that, that it's short-sighted. But again, he's on our platform. That, that is well within the range of acceptable discourse at the Daily Wire. So you know, the, the notion that you have to mirror my exact perspectives on, on what Israel is doing in Gaza is obviously not true based on the roster of hosts that we, that we currently have. There are a lot of other factors, obviously, at play. Right. So actually, let's connect that to something else going on that we did. Okay. So it sounds to me like there might have been some other stuff going on. <laughs> I don't know. But maybe there were some other reasons associated because Ben Shapiro just said, look, you know, there, there can be certain like gradations. He doesn't think that it's a publisher's responsibility to have everybody on that that's a little bit different. Um, and maybe like something like Locals, which is not really a publisher, but just is a mechanism, like YouTube is a mechanism or Facebook is a mechanism to have the content. Um, when you're an actual publisher, there are different responsibilities, et cetera. It's one of these issues that keeps coming up because the thinking is, and, and by the way, Candace is over at Locals. I'm over at Locals as well. You can subscribe to me and follow me there on Locals. It's another platform where all of this content is, is carried and they'll take everything. I mean, so long as it's not, so long as it's not Diddy material, okay? Like they'll pretty much take it. And so their view on things is like, we're not here to stifle you or muffle you in any way. But when you're the publisher itself, it becomes a little bit different. And hey, there's business interests that may come into play, certain sponsorships, I don't know, that come into play. And the networks have the same sort of thing. I mean, it's what I like, ladies and gentlemen, about the autonomy of doing what I do. Because I have somebody that sells the show, a media company that sells the show, but this is, this is me, this is, I own this, this is my platform. It's carried on these various conduits, whether it be YouTube, yay for streaming, yay for the success we've seen on this YouTube platform. Please make sure you subscribe, tell all your friends. Um, it's carried on Facebook, it's carried live on Rumble. And the idea here is, you know what? I can say whatever I want. You know, I'm a, I'm a, pretty, I'm a pretty tame person though. I get in trouble more than you'd think. I've never been able to figure that out. Like I say something and like I get a whole country mad at me like multiple countries. I can name them. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to because I don't want to start anything again. But like, I can get countries mad at me. And I'm like, I don't get it because, you know, somebody else says something and they might even have a bigger platform and nobody cares as much. Apparently, my, my words carry some weight. But I'm, I'm careful in what I say. I may joke around now and then. And if you take that out of context, it could lead you to something. But I also stand by what I've said. And one of the issues that apparently was a big enough issue to land me in enough trouble at my former employer, that would be Fox News, was when I spoke out about how insane it was to shut the whole country down and allow the CNNs of the world to get everybody in sort of a hysterical state. Not saying that, look, I mean, and I have loved ones that I lost as a result of that difficult time, but let's be fair and let's be honest and you needed a strong economy to fight that thing and you didn't and shouldn't have actually cut off your nose to spite your face in that one you should have saved the people that needed the saving i mean in florida ron DeSantis was smart he actually had a rule if you're over 65 he didn't want you out and about like you weren't supposed to even go to the grocery store you needed to get your groceries delivered you were supposed to stay in because you know what you were vulnerable but everybody else they could go on with their lives and so in Florida, those kids were back to school before anyone. And people were out and about. I was at a, a hotel recently. I was just down in Miami. You guys know that. I posted some pictures from the beach if you want to check out my Instagram account. <laughs> just like one or two. I, I might have posted one here too. Anyway, I, I was down in, in Florida and it was amazing to me. I was talking to one of the proprietors at the hotel who told me, hey, you know what? We were closed for a few weeks and that was it. And then we were open and it was thriving. I was recently in Orlando where a woman told me she had moved from New York City, from Brooklyn. She used to be a waitress at BLT. It's a sort of chain restaurant, upscale place. 
And she moved to Florida and she got a waitressing job there. And she said, it's amazing. Like the business was insane and she was making more money than she'd ever made in her life. And she said, I can actually afford to buy a house now. So she bought a little condo and she was so proud of this. And she said, my lifestyle is amazing compared to what I was dealing with living in Brooklyn in New York City, where by the way, you get hit with a whole slew of taxes on top of it and you live in some cramped little place. And she said, this is just amazing. So in other words, there were places and people that got it right. But yeah, I speak out. I speak out a lot. And perhaps my quote unquote publisher was not okay with it because the media went nuts. And so the next thing you know, they pulled a tucker on me. And I don't know what went down with Candace, but it's classy of Ben to not share too many details. She's being classy about it too, and that she's not sharing too many details. And I'm going to tell you this, she's going to be perfectly fine. Again, I don't agree with her on everything, and she may not be my cup of tea on stuff, but hey, there's a place for that. There's an audience for it. And if you're talented enough, you will be successful because that's the new kind of world in which we live. And we need to remember that. Look, there's some things that are really important right now. Our freedom of speech is important. Our borders important. Our economy is important. Our standing in the world is important. You know who knows about this? I'm going to give another plug here for my really good friends and Americans, Americans for Prosperity. I was actually just talking to these guys, AFP.org this morning. You can go to Americansforprosperity.org. And we were talking about all these big issues, but primarily this whole Bidenomics thing and what a sham it's been and how amazing it is. Amazing it is that Biden still doesn't get it. Like he actually thinks that he can run on Bidenomics and he's got to have Obama in his ear saying, hey, bud, you know, like it's not really flying. It's not flying because guess what? The price of everything has gone up. Every single thing has gone up. The only thing that maybe has gone down is if you buy your clothes from China. <laughs> really? Like that's it. Like everything else has gone up. Everything you can think of, and some more than others. I mean, the cost of eggs is through the roof. The cost of meat is through the roof. But the left is okay with that because you know what? You're not supposed to eat meat anyway. It's bad for the environment. And then, of course, the cost of mortgages. People are spending 66% more on mortgages. And you know, it's amazing. In Bidenomics, Joe Biden wants to actually blame the retailers and say, hey, you know, it's their fault. Walmart is just trying to price gouge you. Actually, that's not the case because I went through with Rob, my friend over at 76, and we looked at the margins that these retailers are making. They're making less in terms of margins, much, much, much less. And so the reality of what's going on is that they're just trying desperately to keep up with the pace of inflation. Wages aren't growing as much as inflation is. So again, americansforprosperity.org, they care about this stuff. They're committed to it. And they know that we got to win the House and we got to win the Senate if we're going to get serious about reforming our economy, about making it easy for, or easier for people to access cheap energy, about making it real that we actually have a border and we can protect who is in this country. So do check them out. This is, this is an important, important time and important stuff. It is so good to have you. I just, I see so many of you weighing in. So I want to get a chance to at least respond to some of these comments, remind you that we're going to be here again tomorrow with just the team members here in our little small chat. But, um, TCC says he wears hill figure, not sure if they're made in China, laughing out loud. You know, a lot of this stuff is made in China right now, but you know, it's like I said, it's the only thing that's cheap. Um, some of you weighing in on Can uh, Candace Owens, Look, I, I'll just say this. I wish her well in that the beauty of this moment in time is that the media landscape is changing so significantly, so massively in a monumental way in that we now have an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about stuff and to confront reality and confront truth like we never did before. And I know, you know, people get worked up and certain things don't, you know, look, I've been there, done that. I, I sometimes get frustrated with it because there are things that you can or cannot say. And hopefully this opportunity continues to thrive and exist for all of us. I mean, my TikTok account, for goodness sakes, like I, I can't even sneeze on that account. <laughs> like, it's like, I'm in trouble somewhere with someone about something. So that, you know, that's something that, Maybe True Social should buy since they've got all this equity valuation that is absolutely massive. Let me see if I can check that stock price for you. Um, DJT is the ticker symbol. 
it's down today. It's actually down about six and a half percent, which doesn't surprise me. You know, I'm a long-term investor. So this is one that I can in good conscience say, go out and buy because it's got such a small, small, small amount of earnings, like three to $6 million. If something's trading at 10 times earnings, then it should be like 30 to six, you know, 60 million dollars in valuation, but no, it's like $8 billion in valuation. So I'm happy for Donald Trump. And I think that this is sort of the public's way of showing support for him. And that's terrific. But I'm also like the public has to know that the public might actually just be doing that, right? Just showing support for him. It's, it's nice to see that because on paper, he's been going up by millions a day. So he's down a little bit today. We'll see how it all shakes out. But I'm not entirely joking. I mean, I don't think he could, I don't think that TikTok would be willing to take the Trump stock, but hey, you never know, um, for their entity. But wouldn't that be interesting? I, I think you need this greater opportunity for us to have these spaces like YouTube where we can speak freely and honestly and truthfully about everything that's going on right now. So the streaming is a game changer, both in terms of the political equation, but also in terms of knowledge, right? In terms of what we know. It is so important that the government tell us the truth. And it's so important that if they don't, that we have vehicles to, to come right out and correct them and, and hold them accountable. Accountability is everything. We can't allow this stuff to continue smoldering and going, you know, unchecked. It's not right. It's not good. So thank you. I, I see that you like my cat suit outfit. You guys are teasing me on that. Channeling, what's her name? Uh, Diana, Diana Rigg, right? <laughs> I've gotten that a few times on the chest, on the messages uh, chat. Um, I, I appreciate it. I want to give a plug for my favorite vitamin in the world, which is Balance of Nature. Balanceofnature.com. You can go there and check it out. You can give them a ring as well. You can call them directly and tell them I recommended it. Um, it's it's really been monumental. I like. I'm like, wow. You know, this stuff is pretty good. One eight hundred two four six eight seven five one is their phone number. One eight hundred two four six eight seven five one. You can use my discount code. It's it's important because you're going to get thirty five percent off. So use discount code Trish. Not only are you going to get thirty five percent off, but I also scored you an additional ten dollars off plus free shipping. So consider this. I do. I do love this stuff. I take the fruits and veggies, and I've told you before. I'm not the best about making sure I eat a lot of fruit. I should be better at that. I like veggies, just not fruit. So I think that I needed that vitamin C. You know, the trip to Florida helped too, <laughs> but the vitamins are good. And I, I know they've had so many people, including one of my friends who called me the other day to tell me he's been taking this stuff, using it for years and they love it. And I love it. So I want to encourage you to check that out. Balanceofnature.com. Anyway, we do have a packed show. We're going to continue to stay all over this story. I think that this is going to be Epstein on steroids. And I think there's probably some information in some of these tapes that the feds felt it was really important for them to have control over. So when this lawsuit hit about a month ago, the feds started doing some digging and then they finally showed up this week. Can we end on this video, Drew? If you have it, if you have the video of the Fox report, because this is pretty compelling stuff. You just see the whole house getting surrounded. You see just how big a deal this is. And I, Drew's going to pull that up for you. You just need to see this because it really kind of speaks volumes about how seriously they are. Oh no, that's, um, Drew, if you have, if you have the video, I don't think he does maybe of, I nearly said Epstein, but of the, uh, the comb by the feds in Miami. It would be really interesting to see that. Um, if not, that's okay. We'll, we'll run it again for you tomorrow. I have a feeling there's going to be new video coming out and there's going to be a lot of new developments, but again, his nemesis 56, all this, I think I, Oh, here we, he found it. You see that Drew is pretty special. Microphone. So he can weigh in on this too. I know he comes from a really talented musical background. So Drew has a lot to say, I'm sure about everything. And we're going to talk some more off air about everything that's happened, but he knows just exactly how bad this stuff is. Do we have the video? We do. I think take a peek.
domestic executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. And on the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily armed and okay. uh, they've been very tactical. So living up to his name the there. Bad Boy you. himself, Bad Boy Entertainment, the founder of that company, in some serious, serious trouble. There's big, big charges and political implications. We're going to continue to watch that. I'm back here with you. I believe tomorrow it's a holiday. It's a holy day. Good Friday. I'll see you then.